as you can see, I have Mike Lindell on screen here. I just talked about him going through a deposition for a lawsuit against him by Dominion Voting Systems, I think is who's suing him, or maybe it's uh, Eric Coomer, or I I'm not exactly sure who the hell is suing him, but it's somebody, and it's real. I think they just settled a lawsuit with Fox News for $750 million or something like that um, not too long ago. Anyway, uh, the deposition, just parts of it leaked, and it was so entertaining. Oh, my God. It's hilarious. Mike Lindell is just losing his mind on this poor lawyer for no reason. Not Listen to this. Okay, and I'm not asking about the lumpy pillow calls. Um, no, they're not lumpy pillows. That's not what they call on. Okay, that when you say lumpy pillows, now you're an asshole. You got that? You're a quack hole. <laughs> Mike, is what you are. Mike, no, sorry. he's an asshole. No, he's an ambulance chasing asshole. That's oh, dude, I love it to death. Again, we covered this last week, so we're not going to cover it this week. I just, I love this clip to death, man. You are. Lumpy pillows, kiss my ass. Put that in your book. No, they, they answer anything, any problem customer that wants to reach Mike Lindell. Those are the ones. I want to talk to Mike Lindell. I want to talk to Mike Lindell. They send them to here and they go, or they call about, um, maybe they didn't get their pillow on time because of uh, um, the FedEx or whatever. But we'll cover them even though it could be somebody else's fault. Nobody calls because of a lumpy pillow. Dude, okay, I got to be honest. I actually have a my pillow from long before I learned who Mike Lindell was and that he's a complete monster. And uh, I I was looking at it just like the other day because I, I pulled it out of storage and I had to find a new place to put it. And it is lumpy. It's a lumpy pillow. They're lumpy pillows by design. He shreds, uh, what do you call it? Like uh, shreds foam up and puts the foam pieces into these pillows. That's how these... My pillows are designed. Are you kidding me? Of course they're lumpy. Oh, by the way, while we listen to all of this nutter buttery play out, I'm going to play some um, Breath of the Wild in the background. Uh, shouldn't bother you too much if you've never played it before. It's just, uh, you know, I'm kind of going through like the the temples and getting the shrines and things like that. So, but good, good one, though. You done? Yeah, I'm done. Spoiler alert, he's not done. What I'm saying Obviously, is you don't have a my pillow too. You don't, do you? Obviously, he's seen the product because they are, in fact, lumpy. What I'm saying is, Mr. Lindell. Asshole. I, oh, go ahead. No, I'm pissed. I understand. Yeah, go. When you're. Oh, I love it, dude. I love it today. Anyway, we covered this last week. If you want to see the whole thing, it's hilarious. Give it a watch. So Mike Lindell is just miffed, just straight up miffed over this lawsuit that he's facing right now. Well, come to find out, the reason for the lawsuit is completely justified. It was because he made this thing, this, this video, this movie called Absolute Proof, okay? Now, Absolute Proof was his election conspiracy video that he produced. And I wanted to give it a listen. Like, I want to watch the whole thing. So there are, there are two versions. There's a short version and the long version. Short version that he released is 20, 29 minutes. We're going to watch that one. Let's just start from the beginning. Absolute Proof, exposing election fraud and the theft of America by enemies, foreign and domestic. This was produced in 2021, by the way, is like, I think, immediately after maybe immediately after January 6th it may be after um, Biden's inauguration. I don't remember exactly when it was produced, but OK, let's let's give it a listen. Hello, everyone. This is Mike Lindell, the CEO of MyPillow. As you all know, I have been attacked the last month relentlessly on social media, by newspapers, by TV shows, by um, you name it, I've been attacked. And myself, not just myself, but my- Okay, what do you mean by attacked, Mike? Do you mean criticized for the bad decisions that you're making? You mean other people using their free speech 
to counter your free speech? Is that what you mean when you say attacked? The company, the boycotts that are going on, box stores are dropping me. Yeah, that's called free speech. Welcome to the real world, Mike. Jesus. Box, I think it means big box stores. That's, the, you know, Walmart, Kohl's, and so on and so forth. They're not selling my pillow as a product anymore, or they weren't at this time when this, God, can you even call it a documentary? When this whatever it is came out. Social media, they cancel my Twitter. Today, they cancel my pillow's Twitter account, my company's Twitter account. Yeah, because you're using your company, my pillow, as a platform, as a, I guess, a springboard to boost sales of your pillows and boost your conspiracy theories at the same time. That doesn't surprise me at all. Well, before I was going to get erased completely, we put together this show. And what you're going to see... What does he mean by erased completely, I wonder? Interestingly enough, I actually know exactly what he means when he says erased completely. Now, when he says that, it could mean just erased from the internet completely. That's not happening, okay? Th that's... You have your own website. You have your own platform, just like Alex Jones. You're perfectly free to say whatever the hell you want on that on that platform, right? But when he says erased completely, what he's actually talking about is being erased from existence. I'm not joking. I am 100% dead serious. He went on Jim Baker and his, like, what, TV show or whatever around the time that this came out, and he explained the premise of the film to Jim Baker's audience, a minute and 38 seconds long, right? Just listen to what he has to say here. He believes that he was being followed by government agents, and he was, like, this close to being killed before he released the documentary, but he released it just in time, and they said, Drat, he released a documentary. We were trying to stop that from happening. Now we can't take him out because all the clues have been laid out for everybody. Listen to his appearance on Jim Baker. Now remember, the biggest thing is every state, every single state, was this was a cyber, a cyber attack of historical proportion. No, it wasn't, Mike. You just live in a fantasy land. Donald Trump won 80 million to around 68 million, okay? But here's the four No, wait. He won between 80 million and 68 million? What? No, Joe Biden got 81 million votes. Donald Trump got, um, God, how much was it? Uh, 72 million votes, I believe. Is how many um, Donald Trump got? I'm trying to remember now. Somewhere in there. Miracles that I see. The night of the election, the algorithms that were set with the mm -hmm. 2010 census is what they used. Uh, by 11 o'clock at night, when they realized, when the machines realized, and they realized... Don what, the machines are sentient and they're realizing things now? Donald Trump was going to win anyway because of everybody voting for him. They did not expect this. I mean, that was, a lo that was the Lord there. This is all God's timing, by the way. Now you look at when that happened, they had to stop everything in the middle of the night. And then we've seen all these deviations that didn't make sense. Hundreds we didn't see any deviations the way he's portraying here. This did not happen. Thousand votes in Michigan mm -hmm. uh, that drop in for Biden. Now let's talk about that. Yeah, the 100,000 votes for Biden, quote unquote, those 100,000 votes we're just like like election workers that were counting the votes. They counted them in batches and then they wrote down how many votes each person had or whatever. And Mike Lindell is claiming that the uh, what do you call it? Like the, the machines that are used to vote were being used to flip votes to give somebody an edge or whatever so every vote that donald trump got was uh, actually given to biden and vice versa that's the claim here what did they tell us they said well oh and they used the uh the 2020 i'm sorry they used the 2010 cents uh census data apparently that existed on these quote-unquote machines that mike lindell hates so much Anyways, yeah, they put the uh, they put the votes down in batches, 
And that's why you saw large lump sums going to Biden and to Trump at various points in time. At no point in time did Biden get a lump sum of votes when absolutely no votes were added for Donald Trump. They were all counted, and it was all completely above board. And this guy, years later, still lives in a fantasy land. They tell us, they said, well, those mail-in votes, by golly, you know, those, they vote for Democrats, you know, or whatever. Well, those mail-in votes were counted on the morning of the 3rd, not, the, not in the middle of the night on the 4th. Yeah. Uh, what? What the hell is he even talking about right now? You know, you can explain all these things, but one of the things that happened was you had all these non-residents that voted in every state. That's completely made up. In every single state had all these non-residents that voted. I mean, if he could prove this, it would be like a big deal. If he could prove this, then we could, you know, get people arrested or whatever. I mean, we could really do something with this. We could actually put Trump in power. As a matter of fact, if Mike Lindell proved this to me beyond a shadow of a doubt, I would stand for putting Trump in the presidency. But guess what? Mike Lindell has no clue what he's talking about and has completely fabricated this. It's made up. Well, they, you didn't have that many people go out and commit a crime. That was an anomaly in history that nobody looked at. I looked at it right away going, this has to be done by computers and they're just using their names. They were. They were using the 2010 census. No, they weren't. This is completely made up. He's just pulling this right out of his ass right now. So those people no longer lived in that state or dead people. We all heard about dead people voting. We all heard about it from you, Mike. You were the one telling us dead people were voting. It was fabricated then. It's fabricated now. Dead people didn't vote and nobody sat down and used it and wrote their name. They was pulled from the voter rolls from the 2010 census. OK, let me let me just explain something to you. I'm sorry. I intended to watch this absolute proof documentary and, and we will. We'll get there. But let me just explain something to you real quick, okay? There was a list of voters that appeared, I don't know, 17,000 voters or something with names, addresses, and everything. It appeared, and it was, you know, purported to be a list of dead people who voted, dead voters. BBC went around to each of these people in each of these addresses and checked with them to see, like, are these really dead people? Are these really dead voters? They checked around and found that, in fact, no, these people were alive. They were real voters. And the votes that were, that, like, that was claimed that they cast, they really did cast those votes. They just went and knocked on doors, and lo and behold, there the people are. Now, here's the real question. Where did Mike Lindell get that list from? That's private voter data. He, you're not supposed to have access to that kind of information, right? You're not supposed to know who voted for who and where they live and what their names are and all that stuff. That's private information, right? Where did he get that? Where did he get that list? The answer is he got it from... Well, a variety of sources, but one of them was Tina Peters, county clerk. Let me show you what she looks like. This is her on the right here, if you're watching. This is Tina Peters. Uh, this is Tina Peters running for county clerk again. Her job as county clerk was to back up data. Well, when she backed up the data, she took that data and gave it to Mike Lindell. So she did her job by backing up the data, and she took it a step further and gave your private voter information to Lindell. And what did he do with it? He took the list of voters, just random list of voters, and sent it out through the forums and claimed that it was a list of dead voters when it simply was not. Tina Peters was arrested for that. She received felonies for it. And this is her arrest video, by the way. It's particularly messed up because she knows these police officers. 
There she is. See her? Let go of me. Let go of me. Let go of me. You know what I've found? Uh, you know, I've been arrested before. I'm sure people know that about me. I've been arrested um, long time, you know, 10, 15 years ago. I, I was an addict, a drug addict, and I did some stupid shit. Pulled myself out of that life. But when I was there, I was arrested. And I'll tell you, the one trick that got me out of going to jail every single time, scream at the cop, let go of me, and kick backwards at them. Works every time. They're like, you know what? You're right. I don't want to be kicked at or yelled at. I'm just going to take these uh, cuffs off right now. Let go of me. It's so weird that her yelling, let go of me, is not working on these police officers. It hurts. Let go of me. There's, you see her kicking backwards at them? Look at this, dude. It hurts. Let go of me. Dude, I am enjoying her. Uh, what is it? Schadenfreude? Is that what it's called? I'm enjoying her misfortune right now. I am enjoying not her misfortune, but her accountability that's what i'm enjoying right now accountability give me my oh, I understand. stop it sorry no let's go of me yes you are see she knows his name she called him by his name yes you are caleb how messed up is that this is a conflict of interest if i've ever seen one right give me my key to my car Give me my key to my car. Give me my key to my car. Dude, I love this to death. Give it to me. Give me my key. Take my purse. Uh, she went from give me my key to my car, believing she was going to get out of this, continuing to kick backwards, to take my purse. Instead of trying to get something she's now trying to give something because she realized that her fate is you know this is it this is the end like she's going to jail and she did she went to jail for i i think she's in there for like nine days or something like that before she got out anyway so um that's where mike lindell got a lot of the voter data that he did have and the rest of the information that you're gonna see in this documentary here quote unquote documentary is just fake it's just made up. It's fabricated. But I've been blathering on too long about this subject. Let's just give it a watch, shall we? Today is what they don't want you to see, why they're trying to erase me. I don't know who they is and what, why they don't want you to see anything. And what I've told everyone out there is, you know what? I've seen evidence. I've been trying since November 4th to prove, you know, to show what's out there. Why, why are these deviations that happened on election night? It, not the, none of it made any sense. So I dove all in with everything I had, resources. Anytime I heard something that maybe was relevant, I went and said, you know, looked into it, did my own due diligence, had my even my own investigations. Well, on one day, I think it was like January 9th, all of a sudden, these pe they brought me some uh, a piece of evidence that's 100% proved. It's like... A Perfect! Hey, that's what I need. He says that, that they, whoever the hell they is, brought him a piece of evidence, 100% proof that the election was stolen, right? That's what I need, baby. That's all I'm looking for. You got a believer in me just like that. I, out of principle will believe that Donald Trump should be the president if you can just give me a little evidence. That's all I need. Give me the evidence, Mike. So we're going to get the evidence now, right? He's going to give us the evidence in this? A, a print of, of inside the machine of the timestamp that showed a, another country, other countries attacking us, hacking into our election through these machines, and the, it shows the votes flipped. And I'm going, wow, I got to get this out there. And from that point on, I started putting it out there. And that, that's when they just started attacking me. Who is they, Mike? 
Are they in the room with us right now? Well, they obviously are hiding something, and tonight you're going to see what they're hiding. You're going to see on this show, we have, we're going to have cyber forensic experts. We're going to have 100%. You're going to see all this evidence that by the time you're... Great. That's, that's fantastic. That's what I need. Evidence. Give it to me. You don't see it. You're going to go, wow. 100% it proves exactly what happened, that these machines were used to steal our election by other countries, including China. Okay, it's completely made up, of course. There is no hard evidence of any of this stuff. He's just fabricating all of this. But okay, let's play along, right? Let's go along with it. Let's see what he has to say. But I do want to tell you, before we get into all that, I want to tell you what I consider, why I'm so happy today about two miracles that happened these last couple months. Two miracles, okay. And on election night, 11.15 at night, the, the algorithms of these machines broke, basically broke. And I'll, this will be explained. The, the algorithms broke, okay. And during this show. But they broke. What that means is Donald Trump got so many more millions of votes that they didn't expect that they had, they're going to have to go recalibrate, right? Recalibrate? That is not how algorithms work. Do you know what an algorithm is, Mike? I bet this dude doesn't even know what an algorithm is. An algorithm is simply a system or, or like a, I guess you call it like an equation where you put something in and you get something out. Input, output, like a function, kind of. That's it. That's what an algorithm is. Now, there are extremely complex algorithms sometimes, like the YouTube algorithm, for example. It's very, very complex. But you can't... T I mean, I'm trying to think of an example here of an algorithm like being recalibrated because Trump got too many votes or whatever. This sounds like complete nonsense to me, but you know what? He says he's got the proof. Let's see it. Let's see that proof. So that's why all these states shut down. All of a sudden, they all shut down. And we're all going, what? That's weird. This has never happened in any other election. Dude, what the hell are you talking about? States shut down. What do you mean when you say states shut down and this has never happened in any other election? What? What is he even talking about? I don't know what he means. And then we're going, okay. Uh, then as the days went on going, what? Another, uh, another week that it takes, uh, you know, like Arizona to count 1% of their vote. And, and you see these big spikes like in Michigan. And Yeah, you know why Arizona took so long to count their vote? Let me tell you why. Because Mike Lindell, leading up to the election, before it even happened, Mike Lindell and Donald Trump were both um, pushing conspiracy theories about the election being rigged or whatever. Like, months and months and months before. They were preparing for this, long before the election actually happened. So Arizona had hand-counted ballots, and they had to go through them one by one. That's why it took so long for Arizona to count their ballots. And uh, Michigan, he, he claims that, like, Michigan had, uh, you know, big spikes and all that. No. No, there were no big spikes in Michigan or whatever. It's completely made up, all of it. But okay. All these big, you know, votes that were poured in, nobody understood it, right? We're, we're like... Well, I, I, nobody saw it because it's fabricated. It didn't happen in this kind of twilight zone during that time. Well, that is one miracle there because think if that wouldn't have happened. Think if they would have estimated right. It didn't happen. And what would have happened is it would have been just like a normal election at three in the morning. They would have said, oh, um, Biden won. He won by a little bit. And we would have said, oh, better luck next time. But because he got so many votes, it broke that and, and set off. You don't break an algorithm by putting too many votes into it. What the hell are you talking about right now? This series of events of these deviations. 
If that wouldn't have happened, we would have never been here talking about biggest attack in history, the biggest cyber attack ever. And this is, you know, the American dream would be gone forever because we would have never known. And it would just, you know, using machines, it would have took us over forever. This stuff didn't happen. Mike Lindell lives in a fantasy. He's describing things that he believes happened on election night that simply did not happen. And he's claiming it's a miracle. It's absurd. It would have took us over forever. Here comes the second, the second miracle. And with this one, I got to show you here on the, on the. So the first miracle Mike Lindell is listing is deviations took place in the election. And those deviations proved that the election was stolen. Well, that's completely made up. There were no deviations like he's claiming. And it doesn't prove the election was stolen or any of that. It's completely fabricated. You know, I've, I've never noticed that, that chest before. And now I want to know what's in it. I hate this part of the shrine because it's so easy. It's so easy to die here. Anyways, let's keep listening here. So the first miracle, the cheating. And and we were capable of detecting the cheating because reasons. Because Mike Lindell is amazing, apparently. Okay, go on. On the chart. I'm going to go through these, and I'm going to tell you why this is a miracle. Okay, what we're going to do here, um, we're going to go state by state, and we're going to show you what else happened. So here's Arizona. Okay, the margin of victory was 10,000 votes. Okay, now this is what I find really, really fascinating. Look at what we are looking at right now. I'm going to switch over. You guys take a look, okay? Arizona, margin of victory, 10,000 votes. And he's got this whole big list. Uh, illegal aliens voting, uh, voters, uh, voters registered to a vacant lot. What are his sources on any of this? When you see something like this, usually it has some kind of source listed in the corner, right? There's no source listed in the corner on this. None. The, the source is, I said so. That's it. It is so bizarre to hear somebody so confidently make shit up. There is no source on this this like spreadsheet that that Mike is showing us it's it literally just drawn up by one of the people that works for Mike that's it or hell maybe it was drawn up by Mike himself i have no clue it's completely fabricated okay this isn't real this didn't happen but okay let's listen to these pretend lists or whatever that Mike Lindell came up with probably drew up himself. That, uh, that Biden, they say Biden won. Now, if we look at this, let's go down the chart here. Mail-in ballots require an adjudication, almost 300,000. What these mean are these are votes that they put through, and you're going to learn that you're going to learn all about that during this show too. What adjudication, how that works. But let's just go to the next one: illegal aliens voting. Thirty-six thousand four hundred illegal aliens vote. How would he even know that? Where would he have gotten this information if it were even true? It's not true, by the way. So this is completely made up. But where would he have even gotten this information from? Like I said. From time to time, lists of real voters showed up. And that was largely obtained from people like Tina Peters, other county clerks, backing up their information like they were supposed to, and then illegally handing that data over to Mike Lindell. And he claimed to have a list of illegal aliens voting when it was just normal people. Who had voted? You see that? He only lost by 10,000. Boy, of course they can't vote. Okay, Donald Trump wins Arizona, right? And of course, quote unquote, illegal aliens, as he calls it, they all vote Democrat, right? Every single time. They always vote Democrat. You never find a Cuban or somebody from Mexico who's super religious or hell, somebody from Russia who's an immigrant or anything like that.
you never find one of those people who votes for Trump because everybody who ever immigrates to the United States votes for Biden or votes Democrat. It's like delusion piled on top of paranoia piled on top of garbage. It's delusion all the way down, honestly. We'll just keep going. Voters registered to a vacant lot, 2,000. Completed mail-in ballots received the day before the ballots were even mailed. And where would he have gotten this information? This is made up, all of it. He got 22,000 ballots back in Arizona before they had even mailed the ballots out. What? Well, Mike Lindell actually... Um, I, well, I don't know if he sponsored this or if this is like, I don't know. I'm not sure. But there was a company named Cyber Ninja who was a far right nutcase company owned by a far right nutcase guy who did a full audit of Arizona's or maybe just Maricopa in Arizona's ballots, the biggest uh, county, I believe, in Arizona. He did a full audit and he sat there and I'm not joking when I say this, checked the ballots for bamboo fibers to see if China had printed them out because, you know, China has bamboo. And if China had printed out the ballots, then we would know because they had bamboo fibers in them. I am not joking, really. That is what Cyber Ninja did, for real. So anyway, Cyber Ninja ran this big, um, what do you call it, like this big uh, audit, like this full-blown audit to determine if the count was accurate or not. And guess what? These were people that were on Trump's side. They wanted to find deviations or lies or tricks or whatever. And they came to the conclusion that Biden won that county and won that state, that it was 100% correct and real. There were no problems. In fact, they came back and said, Biden got more votes than we initially thought. I am not joking. So all this nonsense that Mike Lindell is spreading right now is complete garbage always was what? that's kind of bizarre right okay keep going down here maricopa county electronic adjudicated ballots 103,000 votes loaded before opening of polls so the votes were even loaded they were already in there before the polls even opened 50,000 it just completely made up where would he have even found this information seriously okay let's just you see all that let's go to the next state here i'm going to skip georgia and come back to it Let's go to Michigan. Michigan, dead voters, 17,367. And this is so, uh, Michigan is kind of its own. We're going to talk about Michigan. It's very different than the other states, what went on there. So it's all grouped together, 615,000. Totally, totally. It's so super different from different from other states. Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe you without question, Mike. Votes that are just in, in question. Well, and we're going to skip that part, okay? Let's go to the next one here, Nevada. <laughs> okay, here's Nevada. Illegally. Isn't it interesting that he's only going through swing states that Biden won that Trump didn't win? He's not going through Ohio or Florida, which are also swing states, but Trump won. Is it weird to anybody else that he's not going through those? Is it weird to anybody that he's not going through, I don't know, Oregon or Washington State or New York? He's not going through any of that stuff. Is that weird to anybody else? Almost like he he doesn't care. Almost like he's looking for a reason to fabricate this nonsense. Aliens have voted in this election, 4,000. Mail-in or absentee ballots for voters that were known to have voted in other states, 15,000. How would he have known any of this? Is completely made up. Clark County used signature verification, one half the image quality that was suggested by the manufacturer, and to check the mail-in ballot signatures, 130. 
I'm sorry. What? Wait, wait. I I don't understand. Let, let me step back. Listen to that one more time. 15,000. Clark County used signature verification, one half the image quality that was suggested by the manufacturer. Okay, so Clark County, basically what he's saying is Clark County scanned the ballots into the computer and then used image verification to verify that it, re, you know, verify the votes, basically, like the way that the person voted. Here's the thing about voting systems. It's actually extremely secure. When you register to vote, which, by the way, you, you must do, when you register, you have to show proof that you're a U.S. citizen and you have to uh, give an address and a phone number and everything else, all, you know, all your information. You have to give all that information up, right? And when you do, you s put your signature down and that information is later on compared to your, you know, the information on your ballot. If they receive a ballot that does not correspond directly one to one with a voter in the district, they throw it out or they even report it from time to time. They will report that they got a, a fraudulent ballot to, I don't know, the FBI or something, and they'll explain to them that, you know, something shady's going on or whatever. If there's an example of a ballot that doesn't belong there, they go through every single ballot and compare the signature that you put down when you registered to vote, and they compare it to the signature that you put down on your uh your voter like your the voter thing on the ballot so make sure your signatures are the same or they will throw it out seriously so what mike lindell is saying here is that the scans were so bad that you couldn't even make out the signatures it's complete nonsense and how would he even know that anyways it's garbage all of it 15,000. Clark County used signature verification, one half the image quality that was suggested by the manufacturer, and to check the mail-in ballot signatures, 130,000. We'll just skip through that. Um, raffle tickets that they were incentivized, 500. Here we go. Here's a big one. Wait, raffle tickets? Incentivized voting, such as vote and get raffle tickets, cash cards, gift cards, televisions, and more. I don't know if that's true or not, but yeah incentivize people to vote that's great I, I want people to vote voting is a good thing the more people we have voting the better isn't it interesting how in this delusional fantasy land that he lives in voting is viewed as a bad thing seemingly dead people who voted 1506 again he has no way to know that and the list that he passed around was fake those people were alive. Non-Nevadans who voted in Nevada. They don't even live in Nevada. 19,218. How would he know that? Do you have any evidence? This is the evidence, guys. For real. He said he's going to give us the evidence earlier. This is what he's giving us. He's just reading off numbers from a piece of paper. There is no evidence to be had here. Seriously. He created this spreadsheet or this paper or whatever with a list and he put numbers next to each category and he claimed that this was the evidence that the like the, the election was stolen or whatever. Here's the evidence. Insane. Voters who double voted. 42,284. Okay, as you can see, they add... And, and no evidence, of course. I mean, this is the evidence right here, apparently. Up to over 200,000. Donald Trump lost by 34,000 votes. Okay, let's go to the next one, Pennsylvania. Mail-in votes that counted without a Republican observer. We all heard that stuff as well. Okay, that's completely made up. Rep Republican observers. All right. When votes are counted, there has to be, I believe, legally, there must be 
a Republican observer and a Democratic observer there. They have to be observers from each party, uh, nonpartisan people, preferably, who are just there to observe and make sure that everything is ab is above board. I think that's a law, but that's how it's always been done. There is no situation in which Republicans were denied access to the counting process. I mean, this is just like a claim that Mike Lindell wanted to, uh, what do you call it? Like he wanted to, um, to push this claim as far as he possibly could to convince gullible suckers that the election was stolen when it simply was not. Uh, Mail-in ballots, 68. Here's another one too. We could almost come, we're going to, you're going to hear a lot about this during this thing, but let's go down. Poll workers that voted with various heirs in the bins. Um, this is the one where you heard the fake ballots that were driven from New York to Pennsylvania. You'll hear a little about that in the show too. But this is it. We're going to. That didn't happen either. Uh, ballots that were flown from New York, or I'm, I'm sorry, that weren't flown, but that were driven or whatever from New York to Pennsylvania. What? It's completely made up. All of it. Go pay Pennsylvania. You can all see it adds up to 866,000. Donald Trump lost by 68,000. And there, there'll be a point to all this I'm getting to. I love that, like, mail-in votes is listed here. And uh, let's see, what else we got? We've got um, ballots accepted up to three days after Election Day. And we've got poll workers sorted ballots with various errors into bins. Apparently, any ballots that were mail-in or accepted after election day or whatever or or ballots that couldn't be processed by the tabulation machines those were all democrats those were all fake ballots that went to joe biden apparently this dude lives in a fantasy land no joke okay here's wisconsin wisconsin surge of identity combined voters in 2020 that's a, it's a, that would take a while to explain but there was 130,000 um Indefinitely confined voters are voters who are uh, disabled, for example, and incapable of coming to a polling place. So they will go to or so they will usually use like provisional ballots or they'll use mail in ballots or whatever. In indefinitely confined voters increased a surge in 2023. I mean, I don't even know if that's true. I'm sorry, in 2020. I don't even know if that's true that there was a surge of indefinitely conv confined voters. That, that doesn't even make sense to me. And again, how would Mike even know any of this information? He's not giving us any sources. He's not telling us how he found this information out or anything like that. It's all completely made up, all of it, from the ground up. But, you know, his gullible suckers in his audience will believe pretty much anything. If he says it authoritatively, they'll believe it. It's just, wow, dude, I just got nailed by another guard. Oh, I just got nailed by another guardian. U.S. Postal Service backdated ballots. I have no idea what that means or where he even came up with that or, or any of that. It, it's all just... Com Again, guys, this is the evidence. He said he presented all the evidence in his documentary, quote-unquote, absolute proof. We're looking at it. This is the supposed evidence. There's no evidence to be had here. It's completely made up, all of it. It's a spreadsheet that presumably he wrote. It's a, Let me rephrase. It's a spreadsheet that we have no idea who wrote. I, I don't know who put this spreadsheet together. I have no clue. Okay, that's incredible if you actually look into it. Um, the mail-in ballots entering the tabulation price under the guise of absentee ballots in clear violation of state law, 170,000. Okay, Wisconsin, the margin of victory for Biden was 20,000 votes. Now we're going to go to back to Georgia. Okay, everyone knows the president called the secretary of state in Georgia. And on that call, he, he said... Oh, this is the call where uh, Donald Trump said, all, guys, all I need is 11,000 votes. Give me a break or something like that. That's what he's being indicted over right now. He was listing these. 
to the Secretary of State. He said, okay, you have felons with incomplete sentences that voted and cast their vote. 2,500. It's completely made up. This spreadsheet that he's showing here, he wrote it. Or somebody on his team wrote it. There's no... He's not presenting us evidence. He's pretending like he is. He's not. This is all made up. All of it. Insane. Cootmaster, I work for Democrats of Wisconsin. I'm number one phone call support. I know personally how it works, be it mail-in or someone helping blind, uh, helping the blind like my girlfriend. Interesting. Oh, your girlfriend, huh? You guys dating now? I knew you you found somebody. I didn't know how it was going or if it was working out or what. It's really good news, Cootmaster. Glad to hear that. Congratulations. Anyways, uh, yeah, this whole thing is an embarrassment for Mike Lindell to even say, to talk about. It's ridiculous. Seriously. This is supposed to be the evidence, some spreadsheet that he drew up. 60. Underage children that registered to vote and illegally voted. Where did he come up with this number? 66,247. Children who illegally registered to vote when they were not old enough to vote? Really? Where the hell did you get that number from, Mike? Unregistered voted who, voters who voted, 2,423. You cannot vote if you're not registered to vote. Your name has to be in the voter rolls to be able to vote. You simply aren't. Oh, they'll just throw the ballot out. If it doesn't correspond to a, a an address and a name and a signature in the voter rolls book, then they throw the ballot out or they, you know, call the FBI in and tell them that somebody's trying to vote illegally, more than likely. It's in. I mean, Mike knows this. Mike has spent enough time working on, you know, election related things that he knows this. He can't possibly not know how this stuff works. He knows, right? He's just looking for a way to convince people that the election was stolen despite the fact that it was not. Right? Registered voters who voted in another state after their Georgia registration date, 4,926. Again, where would he even have gotten this number? Voters who voted in Georgia and also voted in another state, 395. Voters who voted in Georgia but changed their address before the election to do it, 15,700. People who failed to pre-register to vote in their county in time after moving from one county to another. Wait, people who failed to register in time after moving from one county to another? That's oddly specific. This whole thing is completely made up. Mike Lindell or somebody on his team fabricated this look there there isn't even a source on this stuff seriously there isn't a single source listed on here like oh this is where we found this information this is where we got it or whatever there isn't anything it's completely made up every last bit of it mike lindell has a fan club that comes here i'm sorry that comes to various places and listens to him speak about all kinds of stuff about whatever he has a fan club that goes wherever he is to listen to what he has to say these people live in a straight up fantasy land 40,279 voters who illegally claimed a post office box as their resident 1043 again where is he getting these numbers from Voters who registered too late to vote in the election, 98. People who died prior to the election. They didn't, they were already. That actually did happen a couple of times. You know who it was doing it? It was Trump supporters. There's one guy, famously, who got in a lot of trouble for this. His wife had died the year before, and he voted on her behalf despite her having died. 
the FBI was all over it. They were looking for, I mean, Donald Trump's FBI, they were looking for any evidence of shady anything at all. And they didn't find a single thing, nothing. You know why? I mean, they found that. They found a single example of a dude voting for his his dead wife. You know why that's the like the only thing they found? Because that's all that happened. There was no evidence of malfeasance or trickery or any. Here's the real key right here. No evidence of systemic voter fraud. None. It didn't happen. Okay. Mike lives in a fantasy land constantly. And he's doing everything he can to drag everybody around him into that fantasy land with him. He did. 10,315. Okay, ballots with no chain of custody. We'll probably talk a little bit about that in this show, too. 600,000. Ballots with no chain of custody. I guess that means what? Like ballots that were not put in, that were just like left on the doorstop at a firehouse in a basket. Is that what you mean when you say no chain of custody? Like, I don't know. I don't understand. What could that possibly mean? People didn't put this ballot in a drop box properly or something? Like, I don't know. Irrational Geographic says Hunter's laptop changed all the votes. That's it. See, Hunter's laptop, interestingly enough, this is a little known fact here, Hunter Biden's laptop is the thing that changed the votes over. I know, it's hard to believe. I couldn't believe it when I heard it either, but sure enough, Hunter Biden's laptop was the, the thing that did all the heavy lifting. This show too, 600,000. And here's what the president said to the Secretary of State in Georgia. Can you just give us, uh, why don't you just give us your, it's only 10, he only lost by 11,730 votes. He said, how about you just give us your underage that voted and your dead people? No, that's not what he said. He said, we lost by 11,000 votes and I want you to find those votes for me. In fact, I, I actually have the clip. Well, let me, let me pull it up here real quick. For some reason, it's not pulling up. I can't find the clip. I'm sorry, guys. I was going to find the clip, but I have it. I, I'm just not exactly sure where it is. Um, oh, I have a clip of Donald Trump saluting a North Korean general on North Korean state propaganda. <laughs> you poor dumb fool. What? Just, you know what? I'm not even going to. Uh, here's here's one. I moved on her, actually. You know, she was down in Palm Beach. I moved on her, and I failed. I'll admit it. Whoa. I, I did try and <laughs> her. She was married. It's huge news, Sarah. No, no, Nancy. Yeah. No, this was... And I moved on her very heavily. In fact, I took her out furniture shopping. She wanted to get some furniture. I said, I'll show you where they have some nice furniture. <laughs> I took her out furniture. I moved on her like a bitch. But I couldn't get there, and she was married. And all of a sudden, I see her. She's now got the big phony tits and everything. She's totally changed her look. She's your girl's hot as shit. By the way, this is the video. If you if you're unfamiliar, this is the famous grab him by the you know what um, video. I'm not going to let it get to that point because I don't remember if this is censored or not. I was just letting you guys listen to that while I looked for the uh, Donald Trump clip of the eleven thousand votes. I don't remember when I covered it, but. Oh, uh, here's here's something. Check this out. Again, I, I I'm getting a little bit off track. I'm just kind of going through my clip collection. I save pictures in my clip collection too. This is Sarah Huckabee Sanders, governor of Arkansas, I think Arkansas, signing a child labor bill, basically making it so that people can put children to work. And they don't have to worry about, you know, they it's very minimal child labor laws now. Almost no child labor laws. And look at the picture. Every adult nearly is smiling. Not one of the children is smiling. Not one. How 
whacked out is that? Here's another angle. Not one child smiling. All the adults smiling. But I'm sorry. I'm I'm just I'm getting off track here. I was looking for the video of Donald Trump saying, I need 11,000 votes, give me a break, but I can't find it now, so sorry. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. That was played at the, uh, what do you call it, the, um, the January 6th hearings, yeah. Yep, it was played at the January 6th hearings, and Donald Trump was pressuring him. If you listen to more of the phone call, it, it, they talked for like an hour, and he basically said, it would be bad. It could be bad for your health. Pretty much is what he said. It could be bad for your health. It could be bad for you. It's dangerous for you to not do this. This isn't, you know, you're putting yourself at risk by not doing this. Just ask you, your lawyer, Ryan how dangerous it is to put yourself at risk this way. That's what he said. Like a mob boss. I asked you this morning and you said, uh, well, there was no criminality, but I, I mean, all of this stuff is, is very dangerous stuff. It, when you, See, it's all very dangerous stuff. You talk about no criminality. I think it's very dangerous for you to say that. Anyway, the point is Donald Trump tried to intimidate the guy into like giving him 11,000 votes when he simply did not earn them. And Mike Lindell is framing it up like this. It's just embarrassing. He said, how about you just give us your underage that voted and your dead people and we win. That is not what Donald Trump said. In no way, shape or form is that what Donald Trump said. It makes sense. You say, how about this? Pe this this line here, this people who failed to register, 40,000. Okay, this line? You made this up, okay, Mike? This isn't real. This spreadsheet that you created is fabricated. So he wouldn't have said, you know, I just want this line, I just want that line. Oh, my God, dude. I was trying to deflect on Zelda just now, and I, I, got, I got nailed by one of those little guardians. It was so stupid. Anyways. He was not saying it like this. Just absurd, dude. Line here, this people who failed to register. For I mean, Mike Lindell wrote this spreadsheet up. Donald Trump had never seen this spreadsheet before. You know how I know? It's brand new. Mike Lindell created it, or somebody in, on his team. He tells it. Can you just give us them? He said, just get, he, he named the columns, and you know what? He didn't name any columns, because there are no columns. The Secretary of State of Georgia said, those numbers are wrong. And, and the president said, well, where we, what, who gave us the numbers? He asked his guy. And that guy said, we got them from the secretary of state's office. Mike, next time, try putting the lapel mic on the other side of your suit jacket. Okay? Every time this dude looks at the camera, which is like constant, he gets quieter. You can't understand a word he's saying because he's looking at the camera instead of the what do you call it, like it, the, the, the giant screen behind him. And the president said to the Secretary of State, well, when can we get the right numbers? And the other guy said, sir, we've been trying to get them from the Secretary of State for almost two months. Like this never happened. This whole thing is completely fabricated. And the point being here, now the, here comes the point I'm making. Here's this. Oh, are you reaching a point finally? This is all the second miracle of the election. Oh, there was. OK, so he told us about the first miracle that they stole votes. And that was a miracle. Why? Because if they hadn't stolen votes, then we wouldn't know that it was rigged. Now, what's the second miracle, Mike? Every one of these states should have been in, in two plus two is four. Right. You should say, OK, you can't count dead people. You can't count underage people. Every one of these states, Donald Trump wins. If the electors would have done their job, the legislators, if the if the governors wouldn't have said, you know, hey, it's good. All these things that happened, all these anomalies that happened. There we go. That was actually pretty impressive what I just did on Zelda, if you guys saw that. I don't know if you saw it or not, but I just deflected three blasts like that, just one after another. Those things are real, like the timing on those deflections is so precise, it's ridiculous. So... People who've played this game 
can probably appreciate it. People who haven't played this game or probably don't care. <laughs> all these things that happened, all these anomalies that happened, it would never happened before, but much less one state, they all say that, that, hey, we're going to go ahead and use this stuff and we're going to declare Joe Biden the winner. That's completely made up. Literally all of it. It's fabricated. Mike Lindell lives in a fantasy land of his own creation. And there's the evidence. You wanted to see it? There it is. In a minute on this, Mike Lindell gets this woman on. I've watched part of this. Mary Fanning. He gets Mary Fanning on the phone with him to go through these documents that she supplied that show all of the hacks that took place. Uh, member of the intelligence community, Mary Fanning, right? And she shows the IP address that was targeted and the IP address of the person or the computer or whatever that was doing the hacking. And it shows if it was a successful hack or not. It shows the MAC address of the computer that it came from and everything. That's pretty damning evidence, right? Except Mary Fanning isn't a real person. Not only is she not a member of the intelligence community the way she claimed, she isn't even real. Okay, she's fake. She's a fake person. Try finding Mary Fanning, intelli uh, national intelligence researcher and author. Just try finding her. I did. I tried finding her. She's fake. She's not real. And Mike Lindell is pretending that she came to him with all this evidence, all these blah, 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 blah. It's completely fabricated. Mike Lindell, by the way, as you can see, there's a cat in my lap. She's decided that this is her stream now. Mike Lindell, after all of this, you know, fell apart and everybody saw this for the hoax that it is, this is all fake. He claimed to have intercepted packets of data from voting machines, which is a pretty big deal because voting machines aren't even supposed to be online, right? They're supposed to be disconnected from the internet. So to have, oop, there she goes. So to have intercepted packets of data from voting machines, that's a pretty big deal, really big deal. And he started a contest. Mike Lindell did. The contest was anybody who proves their credentials is allowed to enter, i.e. anyone who can prove they're a cyber guy. You have to be a cyber guy, quote unquote. So anyone who can prove your, that they're a cyber guy is given access to these packets of data, which can only be viewed in this room by these computers and using these programs, so on and so forth, there are a bunch of rules to the contest. And if you can prove that these packets of data did not come from the voting machines, then he'll give you $5 million. And when you enter the contest, you have to sign this waiver that says that you'll go through arbitration instead of lawsuit to, uh, you know, come to the conclusion of whether or not Mike owes that $5 million. Well, guess what? A Trump supporter entered the contest. Dude was a server administrator, I think, for 20 years or something. He had the credentials. He knew what he was doing. A Trump voter wanted to see the evidence that Mike had. So he enters the contest, and he won. He won the contest. He proved that the packets of data that Mike Lindell intercepted, supposedly, was just garbled nonsense. It wasn't real. It wasn't actual real data from a real anything. He used Wireshark. I think it was like a hex editor, that kind of thing. He opened it. He opened the data up and went through it and found that it was just nonsense. And on top of that, he won the contest, right? 
So they, according to the rules, go to the slate of arbitrators. Three judges make a decision on the spot. Did this guy successfully win the contest and prove Mike Lindell is full of shit or not? This, you know, Mike Lindell's contest. This is his rules. And the arbitrators decided that, yes, as a matter of fact, Mike Lindell was full of shit. And this Trump supporter did prove that he was full of shit. I am not joking. Yeah, here we go. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, I've got a couple of clips on this, baby. Check this out. Oh, Mike Lindell was mad. Yeah, check this out. This is him on Bannon talking about it. Aldeas. Well, it is the reality. It is fake. It's the biggest scandal. Um, here I am on a family trip with my grandkids, and I'm attacked from all over the country. I, news reporters call me all day. Isn't it kind of strange this comes out the day after Fox settles with Dominion? This guy's not a cyber guy. I don't even know how he got in there with his credentials he has. He's an IT guy, a computer guy, but he's not a cyber guy. What the hell is a cyber guy then? What the hell are you talking about, Mike? He says he's an IT guy. He's a computer guy. He's not a cyber guy. What is a cyber guy? What does that mean? If not an IT guy, what? Now you say, well, why did these guys rule against this? Well, three- Because you're wrong, Mike. That's why they ruled against you. The three arbitrators- Which you picked- Are left Democrats. Uh, we only had a, you only get a little pool to choose from. Oh my God, dude, he, he picked the arbitrators and he still lost. This is all the way back in uh, May, uh, early May, late April, 2023, by the way, when this happened. The cyber room on the first day and he had to ask other cyber guys how to use wire, Wireshark. Uh yeah, I had never heard of Wireshark and I worked in the industry for six years. I was a server admin for two, and I was a software engineer for all six. They were overlapping years. So I have a total of six years in the industry. Um, which is the, this is the common thing that cyber guys use to open up any, any files or. Apparently it is pretty common. I, I came to find uh, Wireshark is common, commonly used for packets of data retrieved from TCP connections or whatever. Of data in the cyber world and uh so he didn't even know how to do that and and oh then uh, this is the deep state they cut him off huh the deep state didn't want him talking about it all right we just lost mike so we're gonna get reconnected with mike lindell glad to if the deep state allows it mike back here on the lindell report while we're getting reconnected with mike let me remind you we are brought to you by you oh my God. it's just painfully stupid dude anyway oh it's crazy let me know what you think about this in the comments i am so deeply entertained by this watching mike lindell flail around wildly trying everything he can to justify his worldview and explain to himself and everybody else how he was right and you were wrong. You were wrong the whole time. He's right. You're wrong.